start with module number seven, that is guideline to publish clinical data. So now, uh, when we suppose when I ask you that uh, you have to write a clinical study report or like not clinical study report, but a manuscript for a clinical research, the study is completed and now you have to write a manuscript for clinical research. So when I ask you that, what will be the content? So what will be your answer? You will answer that the content will be like first we'll write the title, then we will write the uh, abstract, then introduction, then we will write the method, then we will write the results and then discussion. So now this is your answer for all kind of manuscripts because we have seen that only the research articles which are published on the clinical research which are done. So they only provide. So these are the only sections which are there in each and every study. Now, then what is the difference? Because each clinical research study, they there are certain clinical studies, they are following a different methodology, like there are different types of studies, interventional studies, observational studies, randomized studies, non-randomized studies. Then what is the difference? What is the difference in presentation of those clinical data? So presentation, so difference in when you are writing about the methodology. And if you remember, like when module in module number two, when we were discussing about that, how to write a scientific manuscript so we have discussed certain rules and each rule we have discussed which is dedicated to a particular section like how you have to write that section but there is one section which is not discussed in that that is module number uh, that is a uh, method how to write the methodology what what will be written in the methodology why because every clinical study every uh, research study it follows a different methodology a different approach so according to that only you have to write the methodology in the manuscript so now in the reporting guidelines when we will discuss it so in those in these reporting guidelines it will be discussed that what is the methodology which is being followed for writing this particular clinical research uh, report or clinical research to publish the clinical research data. So these guidelines are explicitly used for a, a particular type of uh, clinical research or particular type of study. And these guidelines will provide you with a checklist as we have seen in the case reports, uh, the care guidelines we have seen. So likewise, the care guidelines has provided you with a checklist in which there are certain items or the topics which are mentioned and what you have to write in that topic that is also mentioned so same here also the clinical research studies the clinical research studies which are uh, the clinical research studies which are done so uh, that is mentioned so they'll provide you with the checklist the clinic reporting guidelines they'll provide you with the checklist like in that particular type of clinical research study which is following this particular type of method method or methodology then what you have to under uh, so uh, according to that checklist what you have to write like what are the topics which are included and in that topic what you have to write so this is the main significance of providing the checklist because sometimes what happens that a certain points you miss out or and due to that the methodology is not explained properly or the results are not reported properly so for that purpose you have a checklist and from that checklist now you can understand that what information or what are the important points or information which you have to include in that particular type of uh, research report okay or uh, or that research manuscript okay and then so no information get missed out or everything will be uh, reported clearly and transparently okay so what is the importance of these guidelines high quality research report contributes to more efficient translation of new research findings into clinical practice and helps advance scientific knowledge and patient care okay so the high quality research reports which are written uh, they contribute into more efficient translations of new research and also their findings are credible they are evident they can be easily verified and hence those literatures can be used by uh, the doctors by the healthcare professionals by other researchers to advance scientific knowledge and also to provide a proper patient care reporting health research in a complete accurate transparent and timely manner is a shared responsibility of all stakeholders involved in research funding conduct and publication 
So it is not only the responsibility of the author to publish or report a health research. It is the responsibility of all the stakeholders who are involved in the research, like the research funders who are involved in conducting the research, who are involved in the publication of the research, so that the research report, it is published in a complete, accurate and transparent manner. And also it should be published in on time. And so, and hence by all these efforts, we all will be benefited so we all benefit from we all we will all get the benefit from all these collective efforts now what are the key problems in poor reporting so key problems in poor reporting is that the critical assessment or the critical appraisal or quality assessment of the study cannot be done okay uh, there will be an uncertain generalizability. Uncertain generalizability means the future implications or what is the use of this research in future that will not be understood and how this research is applicable that is also not understood. Difficulties in reproducibility and replicability, the data which is presented, the methodology, if it is not mentioned clearly in the report, then it will be difficult to reproduce that methodology or to replicate that methodology. And also there are chances of the risk of or the development of risk of biasness. That it means that you have that the author, they have presented a biased report because each and everything it is not clearly presented in the study. So now when the research is published, okay, it starts its own life like it is, it will be a end product for one person and, and the same research or the same study will be the raw material for the other. For example, if the research studies, if, suppose if I am a researcher and I am doing a research study. So first what I will do, first I will design a research study. Okay, then according to that design, I will conduct the research study. And when I have conducted the research study successfully, I have obtained the desired results. And then I, my next aim is to publish the report. So when this report is published, that is the end product for me as a researcher. That will be the end product for me. And now my work is complete. But now, suppose now on the other hand, suppose, for example, I'm interested to write a systematic review. OK, so if I want to write a systematic review, so for that I have to search for the literatures. So now in that case, that same literature will work as a raw material for me. OK, so this literature, which is published, that will be used in designing a further primary research. It will be used for writing a systematic reviews or any other kind of review. This from the from the finding of these uh, this studies only that will be used to inform policies and practices and also to practice the guideline or to come up with new guideline or any amended guideline that can be also updated by the findings of this study. So hence it is required that the study when it is published, it should be published with proper information, concise manner, the information which is presented, it should be transparent and clear. Now, what is the aspect of uh, responsible research reporting? Report results clearly and honestly. So all the results, they should be reported clearly and it should be reported annually as if the desired results are not uh, obtained. So in that way, the results should be uh, presented. So there should be no falsification, fabrication or manipulation with the data should be done. Describe the methods clearly and unambiguously. So the methods, they should be the trans, they should be transparent because with those methods only we can report the trials. Okay. So that so if the report results are reported clearly and unambiguously, the findings can be confirmed by others. Okay. Adhere to publication requirements. Okay. The data, it should be original, it should be non-plagiarized, and it should not be published elsewhere. Okay. Then uh, so that uh, the data which is published or the information which you are including. So in case, uh, although you, uh, in case if you are uh, doing the citation also, then too you have to write that information in your own words. Do not exactly as it is copy and paste the information. The next is disclose funding sources and relevant competing interests. Then it is important to disclose the funding sources and what are the conflict of interest amongst the authors, amongst the researchers and the authors. So what is the uh, conflicting uh, information so in, in interest? So that can be disclosed at the end when you are finishing your research report. OK, so now the question arises that where these uh, guidelines are available 
Okay, so these guidelines are available on a platform or a single platform, which is known as Equator Network. Equator Network is an umbrella organization which will provide you with the list of all the guidelines and also for which study these guidelines are used. And so this is a platform for research reporting guidelines. Equator stands for enhancing the quality and transparency of health research. So how you can access these guidelines? Uh, just wait, I'll show you. So now this Equator Network, it stands for enhancing the quality and transparency of health research. So this is the same website as it is, uh, as you have seen uh, right just now in the screenshot of the slide. Okay, so now here you can see the name of study designs are written like randomized trials, observational studies, systematic reviews, study protocols, diagnostic or prognostic studies, case reports. And they hear the name of the guidelines which are written like randomized trial for writing, for doing the randomized trials, consort guidelines are followed for writing the observational studies trope guidelines are followed for writing the systematic reviews prisma guidelines are followed so if you know that what kind of study you are reporting or for what kind of study you are writing the research uh, report or the prime uh, the research report or the research manuscript so accordingly from here you can follow the checklist like suppose if you're writing a systematic review so for writing the systematic review you have to follow the prisma checklist so what you have to do is you have to click here on Prisma, okay? Then Prisma 2020 checklist, it is given in Word and also in PDF. So we will open the PDF one. So you can open the PDF checklist, okay? Okay, now this checklist will open. So here you can see in the same way, the uh, name of the uh, uh, topics are written like section, Title, like what you have to write in the title, how you have to write the title, then abstract, how you have to write the abstract, introduction, how you have to write the introduction, method, so what you have to mention in the methods, how, what do you have to mention in the result section. So everything is explained clearly. So following this Prisma checklist only, you have to write the systematic reviews, okay? So generally the reports, the research manuscripts which are written, so they are written following these reporting guidelines and also the instructions which are provided to you by the general, like that is the instructions to author. So you have to follow the, these guidelines as well as the instructions which are provided to you by that, uh, by the general, okay? So likewise, so likewise, this is for the systematic review. Likewise, you can find the uh, checklist for other type of studies as well like for consort, for observation studies. So the strobe guidelines are followed. So you, you just have to do what? You have to click here on strobe and the strobe guide checklist for combined that you can open either in Word or in PDF. So there is no need to remember these checklists by heart because it is, uh, it is not possible. Uh, maybe you will start doing it, then you will remember. So there is no need to remember. Otherwise, you just you should know that for which type of study which checklist is being used and how you can access these checklists and overall what is given in that checklist so that is that you should remember otherwise whenever you are asked to write a research manuscript so there and then you can open the checklist from this uh, website okay and uh, then you can go through that checklist like for case reports the care guidelines are given which we have already uh, discussed so like this you can access these uh, guidelines from the Equator Network and the web address is equator-network.org. So you or you just type Equator Network on Google and it will guide you to this page. Okay, understood? 